Heavenly Father, we're grateful to be here in this house that you provided for us, one place set apart that's uniquely different by virtue not of ourselves as people, but because of the word that you have sent us, which has been vindicated by your own presence. We thank you for that, Lord, and we thank you for your own personal presence. Even as Paul said, that uh, rock that followed them and that cloud that preceded them, that hovered them, kept them, was Christ. And we believe the same thing in this hour, that the pillar of fire leads us into the millennium and onward. We appreciate that, Lord. We pray now that as you gave a word to Moses in that hour to lead them in the great exodus and enter into the promised land, even so we had a word that brought us out to take us in. And we appreciate that very, very much. Help us, Lord, to hear the voice of the prophet this morning and to have the thoughts of his mind, the understanding of his heart, which you gave him, and we'll be careful to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> now, we're on number seven of Easter Seal, and in our last discussion, which was a few Sundays ago in this message, we found Brother Branna speaking from Acts 2, where the people newly baptized with the Holy Spirit were speaking in languages they had never learned. And from this manifestation of the Holy Spirit, he made an emphatic point concerning the quickening power of the Holy Spirit in that this quickening, now we're talking of the manifestation, the hearing of tongues, in that this quickening was not only for their souls, quickened from death unto life, but even for their bodies, as their bodies were quickened to speak in languages that they had never learned. So you can see the actual power of the Holy Spirit working through people on the day of Pentecost. Not only were they filled with the Holy Spirit, but they became witnesses, and that witnessing was acted in a supernatural manner where God allowed all these Galileans uh, to prophesy, and actually then down in the areas, other areas, to speak in tongues, being understood. Now, having said that, <clears throat> that the bodies were quick and supernatural to speak in languages that the body had never learned because, you know, your brain is part of your, your body, those governed by spirit. He immediately mentioned further quickening of bodies because the sick were healed, and not only from diseases but from birth defects, as we saw in various chapters of the book of Acts. Now, these manifested acts clearly showed it was the Holy Spirit moving according to the will of God, even as Peter said in Acts 2, 32 to 33, and Paul in Hebrews 2. So we go to Acts, <clears throat> the second chapter, 32 to 33, and Peter says, This Jesus hath God raised up, resurrected, Easter, sealed, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which you now see and hear. So and evidently there was an absolute manifestation. And, and Paul, in Hebrews, the second chapter, <clears throat> says the same thing. Be verse 1 to about 4. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Now notice what he says. Why you should pay particular attention, don't let it get away from you. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense or reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Now notice that one is penalty unto death and the other is a free gift unto light. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? See, that's your, <clears throat> that's your gift, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. So you can see here the word of God the gospel was never to be without authoritative power. <clears throat> and authoritative power, of course, I'm just saying this, we have the authority, no matter who we are, to believe the word of God and to see it fulfilled, and it all goes back to the resurrection. Now, 
In paragraph 92, Brother Branham makes the most powerful and definitive statement of only five words. He, the Holy Spirit, as he demonstrated what God was. The Holy Spirit demonstrated what God was. In other words, exactly what you should look for and not deviate from it. Then, true to his ministry, <clears throat> Brother Branham turns us to this very hour, which is Revelation 10, 1 to 7, God and his prophet on earth at the same time, where Brother Branham himself stands in Revelation 10 and 7, that's the prophet at the end time, with the Holy Spirit present, that's Revelation 10 and 1, God having come down, again demonstrating what God is or what God's true nature is. In other words, Brother Branham told us, when you see certain things happening, you know that it is God. Now remember, this is the definitive truth coming to you. When you see the sick healed, remember the devil cannot heal the sick. When you hear, thus saith the Lord of Deuteronomy chapter 18, that has to be God if it's fulfilled exactly as it comes forth, and you know that is the one you are supposed to hear. Now people do not simply believe that. They take their own criterion. But remember what Jesus said, if I had not done the works no other man did, they had not sinned. Now, now that's the point. There's sin there <clears throat> whenever God comes on the scenes and, and demonstrates himself as to his true nature, healing the sick, raising the dead, discerning hearts, or anything else which is positively one with the scripture that only God can do, you know it is God. Then he said, but now he said, they have both seen and hated both me and my father. And the same people will tell you, I love the Lord. Yes, I will even die for him. And the Bible says they hate God. Now you make up your mind which way you're going. Now I have to preach tough because I know people want to believe this. Here's where I get all of my flack. And if you're not getting the same flack I'm getting, you don't believe what I believe. So who needs you? You wouldn't stand with me if you're paid to. You say, why stand with you? Because I'm standing with the Word. No church or Christ minister, no Pentecostal, nobody's going to tell me they love God when Jesus says different. It says they hate Him. Now, come on. Well, brother, this is love. That is not love. That's hatred. You say, oh, you sound like you hate now. It's my business how I sound, long as I give the word of God. I've got to school myself and watch myself. There were years I wanted to be all gushy, gummy, and gooey. Loving, sweet, this. I, went to, I told you I went to Brother Branham. I said, Brother Branham, I know you're right. It's got to be love is the evidence. And I, what have I got? Well, I don't have anything. It's driving me crazy. <clears throat> well, he said, Lee, we'll go talk to God. And the vision that came down was what? He steered me out of the propensity of false doctrine, which is the evidence. And even William Branham didn't know what happened in that hour. Because it was the next year God said, hey, man, you're teaching wrong. Love is not the evidence. It's believing the word for the hour. To believe it means to stand with it. And I'm preaching you the truth. This is the one that I won't have to worry about the white throne on before it. No, I don't have to worry that I've led you astray. I could be up here and, 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 and go out here and rob a bank and <clears throat> mug some poor old lady. <clears throat> In this pulpit, I've told you the truth. And my actions, my demeanor, and nothing has anything to do with the truth which comes from God, period. It's the truth that counts. It was vindicated. All right. Then he categorically says that the Holy Spirit itself is here to bear record of this hour. <clears throat> now, what has he been talking about? Unfortunately, Brother Branham has been referring to Pentecost, the day, in the context as of the resurrection. And as you hear the thoughts on Pentecost, it is only too human for the devil to allow you to turn your mind from the salient factor, which is the resurrection, without which there wouldn't be any Pentecost. So you want eggs? Well, Brother Vale, 
I don't think I need chickens. Well, I hate turtle eggs and snake eggs and dove eggs are too small. If I want an egg, the Bible speaks of chickens. How are you going to get Pentecost without the resurrection? So the factors here are not concerning the day of Pentecost, Acts 2 and 4, like Pentecostal people want to put this, but in the mind of the prophet, it is Easter seal, Easter, which is resurrection, which resurrection is a seal, which is an abstract. <clears throat> so no matter what happened at Pentecost, that is not it. It is the resurrection. Now, Peter understood this. And if Peter is a scribe and an apostle understood this, how much more a vindicated prophet like William Branham? Again, Acts 2, 32 and 33. This Jesus has God raised up, and there's over 500 of us saw him. And we saw him for many days. Now listen, therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, therefore, being raised up from the dead, what you are seeing and hearing is the result of this resurrection. There's the chicken and there's the eggs. If you want to know the truth, Jesus Christ is the chicken. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit coming forth from the resurrection of Satan. Whatever you want to call it, eggs or call it what you want. <clears throat> but the fact of the matter is you must look at the resurrection per se. Now there's got to be a proof that he was raised from the dead. And if he's raised from the dead, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he cannot change in his own mind, in his own attitude, his own understanding, and his own judgments, his own word, his own actions. There's nothing you can change. You can't do it. Because that's the book of Malachi. I am the Lord, <clears throat> I change not. <clears throat> Lest ye sons of Jacob be destroyed. In other words, in plain English, if God himself were to change, every single one of us would be destroyed. Now, he then affirms that the Holy Spirit <clears throat> is hunting out honest hearts that will believe the message of his vindicated or demonstrated presence, and when it is accepted in its fullness, adding nothing or taking nothing, God gives us the abstract to everything that is promised in the Bible. And remember, it is for this hour, which is Easter, which is resurrection. <clears throat> because Brother Branham is talking concerning resurrection, talking concerning the first resurrection, talking concerning the second half of the first resurrection, which is identical to the first half. Right. We've already had one half of the first resurrection <clears throat> due to the presence of Almighty God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And remember, Jesus Christ's body was on earth. Therefore, God himself was on earth at that time when the body was raised. And yet the presence of God today is just a doctrine to people. You wonder why that I stand up here and I'm so strong? <clears throat> the way I am, because I've got to batter against all the unbelief and all the false doctrines in this message. And believe me, there's about 110 of them for all I know. Now, Brother Branham, <clears throat> when he said the Holy Spirit is here to bear record of this hour, he was categorically speaking <clears throat> of the second half of the first resurrection and that which accompanies that particular hour. And it's in John 14 and 12. Verily that I send you, he that believeth on me, he is in the singular. The works that I do shall he do also, 
and greater than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. <clears throat> now, how in the world could he go to his Father except there be a resurrection? Therefore, by the right hand of God exalted, he has said for this which you now see and hear, the Holy Spirit himself was there manifesting through the people. <clears throat> So the presence of God was there, and God was dividing himself into the people, a certain portion of himself. Yet he himself stood there, the same as he did with the Apostle Paul. And you will notice he stood before the Apostle Paul exactly as he did in the day of Pentecost, because before the pillar of fire came, nobody received the Holy Ghost. And but when the pillar of fire came, he divided himself. So it was with the Apostle Paul, he stood there. But he did not divide himself at that time unto the Apostle Paul. <clears throat> In other words, Paul was not given a portion of God until Ananias laid his hands upon him after being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then in the desert of Arabia, he went there for a certain length of time, and there the pillar of fire appeared to him and gave him an absolute, <clears throat> perfect, total recall. But Brother Brandon himself said, I was different from all the rest because I could tell exactly as it was. Total recall, perfection was right there. <clears throat> so, you see here, Brother Branham is talking of this very particular time. And he says, this hour. He is here to bear record of this hour. <clears throat> Not some other hour. See? The hour of where he stands as the judge. In Malachi, the fourth chapter. All right. <clears throat> As we see this, so, so we, as we see this clearly, we're going to read from paragraph 91 to 95 on page 19, and in doing so, I believe it can be seen that Brother Branham is speaking of himself because of his reference to John 14 and 12, and then opens the door <clears throat> to all true believers as to Mark 16, because Mark 16 has been denied by the scholars. Remember the old joke Brother Branham told about the, the boy who was sent off to Bible school and his mother was home and, and uh, they thought she was dying and said, well, if your mother gets worse, we'll let you know in a hurry. And well, the mother didn't get worse, she got better. <clears throat> so the boy came home and he said, mother, he said, um, how in the world? Um, he said, you look so good. He said, what did the doctors give you? Well, he said, she said, they gave me up. That's what they gave me. Well, how in the world is this why he said? She said, you know those people down there in the corner that pray for sick? He said, no, Mother, don't tell me you went there. Oh, yes, I did. And I suppose you got healed. He said, yes, I certainly did. He said, Mother, he said, uh, how, what makes you think so well? She said, the word of God says in Mark 16 <clears throat> that the sick will be healed. He said, Mother, that's not even in the Bible. Well, she said, glory to God, son. If I can get healed by what's not even in the Bible, how much more can I get what is in there? Couldn't fool the old girl. <clears throat> he was showing the people that Mark 16 is available. And there isn't one church that shouldn't believe it. And there isn't one church that shouldn't be having something of it. See? Because that is part of our inheritance. <clears throat> See? Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted. God is doing these things. Why? Because there's an abstract. It wasn't that God couldn't do it. It was because sin lay in the way. And now with the people understanding the completion <clears throat> of the sacrifice and the word of Almighty God in his full climax with Christ raised from the dead up there, the Holy Ghost come forth, <clears throat> they understood there was nothing impossible to them what was in the word. The trouble is everybody wants something outside the word. Then they want to fit the word into their convenience when they're dying. Forget it. I don't believe too much in deathbed conversion, brother, sister. Just have hang on tough on that one. I know there was one thief on the cross, but 50% of the people don't get saved in their deathbeds. What child training do you get when you're on your deathbed? What kind of service rendering to God? Why, it's, 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 it's illegitimate talk to even think that. <clears throat> Let's understand what we're saying. When you talk about these things that Brother Branham is speaking of in Mark 16, let me show you where we are at. And I can quote it for you, but I better read it over here so you know where it is. Chapter 8 of Romans, and in verse 32, <clears throat> He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now, what are the all things? The all things, <clears throat> Brother Branham said two things about it. We are the all things of God, and the word is the all things. 
So in other words, every promise has been made absolutely sure to us since Jesus Christ rose. His death was only a part of it. If he had not risen, the death would not have encompassed what we have today. It is impossible. All right, let's go to page 19. We are quickened, paragraph 91. We are quickened then by the power of the living God. <clears throat> All right, we're quickened actually by God's own strength. Now, what is God's own strength? Well, God is spirit. That's all he is. You're not going to go beyond that. And whatever comes out of that spirit is simply a manifestation. So you're being told here you're quickened by God's own spirit. <clears throat> See, you're given what you can use in your life. All right, tongues, quickened to a new heavenly language. What does that mean? It means the language came from heaven, though it was an, an actual language on earth. Brother Branham, in refuting the Pentecostals, that, they, that they, you speak with tongues to receive the, or receive the Holy Ghost and speak with tongues, and they said heavenly language. And Brother Branham said, you got the cart before the horse. He said they spoke in known tongues, and then they prayed in heavenly languages. But the heavenly language here is not something that Brother Branham is forgetting that he thought he said some other place, and now he's made a mistake. He's contradicting himself. He's talking of you. The Holy Ghost came down from heaven, and when it came down from heaven, it brought any number of languages, known and unknown, because it's heavenly. <clears throat> Earthly would mean you were taught something. <clears throat> See? Okay, we are quickened then by the power of the living God. Tongues quickened to a new heavenly language to speak them, a rapturing up, and that means a catching up, a, a raising up, an elevating, a raising up into a different atmosphere from what they'd ever lived in. That, that's what the apostle Paul mentions. He said we're in the image of the earthy, but he said we're going to have the image of the heavenly. And this is where the image starts. How could you be a tall believer <clears throat> and that you would have a heavenly image different from your earthly image if there wasn't something to justify your faith? Well, then you, if you, there wasn't something to justify your faith, <clears throat> you could say, well, this man says this, and this man says this, and this man says a third, and this man says a fourth, and this man says a fifth. Aha, I think I like what number three says. What if it just came out of his head? You can't trust something that, <clears throat> that doesn't have something to back it. You're trusting right now for your banks, your, your federal uh, backup system. You know, as you says, we, we, we are a safe bank, and we have the federal guarantee. Hogwash. There isn't 4% left. It's gone. Well, I'm trusting. Well, you're, you're trusting like a fool. You better find out your money isn't safe. <clears throat> it's now believed they'll call in the $50 bills and the $100 bills pretty quick. I don't know that they will, and I care less. Fall of Russia. Look how stupid the world is. Russia's communism is proven absolutely fallacious. It won't work. And yet Mandela wants communism in Africa. Complete idiot. Completely gone. The world's finished. <clears throat> Yet a bunch of theologians getting together say they can put, put some little words out of their mind into, into their mouths and people listen. Forget it. If the word isn't vindicated in this hour, you forget it. Amen. You're as crazy as the banks. The banks are going to lose out, don't worry. The banks are going to come tumbling down. <laughs> I read too much of that stuff. Maybe you do too. All right, listen, <clears throat> another atmosphere, <clears throat> something that's not natural, see? You know, it's funny, man's always wanted to fly, but when God gives him a chance to fly, another atmosphere, he says, huh? <laughs> Criticizes God, them tongue talkers, them this, them that. I've nothing against speaking in tongues, it's real. There's no problem there. They just don't understand the Bible. Now, it was this new quickening life given to them that came into them that quickened their language. In other words, a rebirth. You're born again by the baptism with the Holy Ghost. They spoke in new tongues. Oh, yes. <clears throat> All right, now watch it. After they received the abstract, which was designed to give them every promise that was on the grounds, that is, every promise that was on 
the grounds of God's Word that was promised in the Bible, that quickening power was given to them to quicken that promise to them. Therefore they laid hands on the sick, they were healed, they spoke in new tongues, they did great signs and wonders because that was in God's promise. And when Jesus died to redeem that back to them, <clears throat> uh, the ground or the principles that belong or the, the, the truth that belonged to the sons of God, he demonstrated what God was. How dare we socialize that and put it into an organization? We have no right to do that. <clears throat> In other words, an organization come along and say, well, we don't believe that. We're going we, we're to control God. And you know what they do? They do control God. Jesus did not many mighty miracles because of their unbelief. You bet you can control God. He'll just stand right back and walk by. Oh, yeah, churches, they're crazy. Absolutely ridiculous, insane, <clears throat> devil-possessed. A bunch of people get together and say, well, this is this and this and this and this. God walks right back. And they control God. They've controlled God out of their lives. Would you want to control God that way? You can, you know, it's up to you. It's up to me. Yeah. Remember the old saying, who is on the Lord's side? Separate yourselves. Not who, not who is God on whose side, it's who is on God's side. <clears throat> you have a decision. He made the decision, she made it wrong. There's a bride this time though that isn't gonna make the wrong decision. Amen. See, she was not pregnant by Adam or the serpent never could have got to her. The bride at the end time is pregnant by the word of God. So the devil, he ain't got a prayer. He wouldn't pray anyway. But he hasn't got a chance. Come on, let's face it. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> here we're looking at this. Now watch it. After they received the abstract, which was designed to give them every promise that was on the grounds, that is, every promise was on the grounds of God's Word that was promised in the Bible, that quickening power was given to them to quicken the promise to them. <clears throat> All right, it tells you right here that when Jesus rose from the dead, that was the guarantee, positively, that everything in the Word of God that was designated right back there from the Garden of Eden was positively theirs at now. <clears throat> Nothing could be done about it. And so every word then for the hour that especially was written for each, the church coming up was now available to them. You see, now look. In other words, the Holy Spirit, this resurrection seal, fulfilled the contract pay on demand. When man could not come to that place, God himself brought man to that place by a free gift of grace. Just what I read in, in, in Romans 8. If God spared not his son, but freely delivered him up for us all. Now that's the big print. And the fine print says, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things? <clears throat> you got the abstract. Risen from the dead. At the right hand of God exalted, absolutely definitive, there is no way there can be a mess up. All right, now watch. That quickening power was given to them to quicken that promise to them. Okay, the Holy Spirit made alive the word first. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit made alive the word first. It has to, because that's the only way that you can truly know what is the word of God, it comes alive. Then the Holy Spirit made them alive to the Word. Now, that's a tricky part. <clears throat> Brother Branham came, and God absolutely made the Word alive to the people, manifested it to them. But how many people were made alive to the Word? Well, they said, this is the devil, this is that, this is the other, this is psychology, this is voodoo. <clears throat> how many people said, this is that prophet which was to come? Now remember, they didn't believe that in the days of Jesus Christ when he came to Israel. Now remember, he has to come to the Gentiles according to Matthew 12. How many Gentiles then said, this is that one, Elijah, which was to come? <clears throat> they couldn't take it. More and more books are, are being written against Brother Branham. I don't care how promising different people seem to sound. They're not going to take this word. Now then, the Holy Spirit made alive the word first. 
and then the Holy Spirit made them alive to the Word, and then the third thing was the Word took precedence over their lives. Now watch what happens here <clears throat> with Paul the Apostle in chapter 2 and verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul denies his own ability. <clears throat> now, where then does the ability come from? The ability comes from God. Now the point is this. How do you know that ability is fulfilling what God wants because of that word? Now look, if I told you to go downtown and buy a car for me, you could, come, you could buy any old car you wanted. But if I said I wanted a Volkswagen, you better not come back with a Buick. <clears throat> In other words, cars are cars. But there's a, they're all different kinds of cars. And you got the word is the word. But the point is, what word? <clears throat> you just can't take any word and say, well, this is going to suit me. The Holy Spirit himself absolutely vindicates the word. The people see the vindication, and if there's a place in their hearts for that vindicated word, they receive that word because that place in there already has the life of God in it, the seed that reaches out and takes the word. Now you've got the word presented, the manna. <clears throat> and the children of God will not murmur against the manna. They will know what the manna is, taking them into the promised land, and they will rejoice over that manna. The next thing is, out of that comes the strength wherein they have died to themselves. They're in a new atmosphere, and they begin living unto Almighty God. Now, that's what Brother Branham is saying here, and Paul the Apostle enunciated it. <clears throat> now, he said here they did great signs and wonders because that was in God's promise. Now, the point is, if it's not in God's promise, <clears throat> then those people cannot have it. But what is in the promise of God is quickened to them, and they, they believe it. Now, and he says, when Jesus died to redeem them back, the ground that belonged to the sons of God... Now, what belonged to the sons of God? What is in the word starting in the Garden of Eden? <clears throat> See, they got thrown out of the garden. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law in order that we get back to Eden, which is the millennium. And remember, the tree of life in Eden signified New Jerusalem because that's where the destination of the tree of life is with the roots on both sides of the river. <clears throat> That's why Abraham looked for a city. And God never said one thing, look for a city. He said, go to the land. And Abraham knew the land wouldn't suffice. There had to be a city. Because God told him. Lot didn't worry about a city. He wasn't even interested in a city. You say, well, he went down there to, to Sodom. That's exactly true. He went down where little cities were. But remember, Abraham gave him the choice of all the land. And he looked around and he said, this is the best land. And Abraham says, then, son, you take it. And I'll go over here where it ain't so good. Why? Abraham was looking for the real city. This other guy looking for real estate. Now, if you can't tell a good piece of land from a bad piece of land, you see one, you ain't no farmer. <clears throat> There's something wrong with your head somewhere. <clears throat> this old fellow Lot, <clears throat> he got his eyes on the wrong thing. He was of the earth earthy. Abraham looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. There's a big difference between the bride and the foolish virgins. And a bigger difference from those who are right 100% out there. Old, old Lot, I don't know, he seemed to be kind of between the foolish virgin and the complete reprobate, but he wasn't. He was a pretty badly shaped <clears throat> foolish virgin. All right, now, it says here, this belonged to the sons of God, what was in the Bible. Now, at Pentecost, both the sons of God and the promised word had come from God and met there <clears throat> at that particular hour. <clears throat> and you'll notice that this constituted a true logos. It constituted a true expression though here on earth and in a negative form the sons of god being negative 
now looking forward to the positive when the power of God is loosed upon immortal people. You know what I said? You're looking at Hebrews 6. Keep that in mind. We are literally experiencing <clears throat> the millennium and the new Jerusalem <clears throat> when back there they merely caught the first glimpse of it. But it was there because, you see, the foundation stone is the same as the capstone. Cornerstone is capstone, just another position. All right. <clears throat> You're looking at a true Logos there. Now, in 93, the Holy Spirit in Barnabas says, Today is hunting out honest hearts. Now, that's plural. That's not John 14 and 12. John 14 and 12 is singular. He's thinking on honest hearts that would believe that message. <clears throat> believe what message? Not what came forth on the day of Pentecost. That isn't going to do you any good. It won't work. The message is Easter seal. Resurrection. We are Easter. We are resurrection. <clears throat> we are in that hour. And the abstract has come into view once again by John 14 and 12. You're into the abstract. <clears throat> You're into the proof. What proof? Not the beginning of a church age where the second half of the first resurrection starts, but you're looking at the end of the second half of the first resurrection. This is New Testament bride, wherein it was Old Testament bride. That's the first half of the first resurrection with Job and Abraham and Joseph and Jacob, all the great wonderful patriarchs like Isaiah and, um, you know, um, <clears throat> all the old prophets, all those people. All right. Now, we're looking at it today. And now you can't put this in organization. So you've got to get out of it. <clears throat> He's looking for honest hearts that will believe that message, which is the resurrection. Now, everything in the Bible that was promised is to that believer or those believers. And when you accept it in its fullness, then God knows that you'll do it. <clears throat> he gives you the abstract to that. Now, you'll notice in this particular point, Brother Branham is not mixing his metaphors, but he is mixing the singular and the plural. <clears throat> now, into the plural is God is looking for the honest hearts to believe that message. Now, notice, concerning that message, which has to be a vindicated message, which has to be in the power of the resurrection, <clears throat> which in that respect is a return to the omega, the alpha rather, when the Holy Spirit first came. He says everything in the Bible that was promised to that believer, you'll notice the singular now, when you should put he accepts in his fullness, then God knows that he'll do it. He gives him the abstract to that. Now, at the same time, it is in the singular to the believers in the message. But it's got to come to somebody first. It can't just fall on everybody. It's impossible. <clears throat> There's got to be the believer of John 14 and 12. He that believeth will do greater works. Now you're looking at the same thing down here, a vindication as when Peter was a spokesman. There were literally, how many, 500 people that believed it. <clears throat> there were 12 apostles and many more in that great day. 500 names they see up in there. They believed it. But Peter was the spokesman. He was the one who positively was the one who was able to explain what was going on at that particular time. <clears throat> now, it says here, God will give you the abstract to that. Now, let's watch. The Holy Spirit today, resurrection, hour, is hunting out honest hearts that will believe that message. What message? The message that comes from somebody. <clears throat> it's got to come from somebody. What is the message? Resurrection. So who's going to bring a resurrection message? 
There's got to be a message for this hour, he's telling us. <clears throat> All right. Now, everything in the Bible that was promised is to that believer who brings the message. And when you accept it, then God knows that you'll do it. Why? Because the light of the word that you accept is in you so that you can do whatever is incumbent upon you. And the big thing is to believe it. Live, die, sink, or swim until your mind is a completely overcoming mind because it's completely sealed with the word of God. As long as you've got doubts about this message and think this could be right and that could be right instead of exactly what the prophet says, your mind is still open to a pregnancy which is not a God. Now, a lot of it depends upon us. I told you the battles I've kept gone through. <clears throat> now, then God knows you. He gives you the abstract to that. The abstract to what? The message that has been vindicated with its promises for the hour. <clears throat> what is the abstract? Everything is struck off against your title deed by virtue of the resurrection. You follow what I'm saying? There was a resurrection back there. The proof final was they went up in, in, in a rapture. <clears throat> now we're looking at the same thing. The proof final is Mount, Mount Zion, which is the rapture. But who's going to be in it? He says right here, there's a group of people who believe <clears throat> a message that absolutely proves the abstract. And what would the message say to you, me little bride? You never even did it. You are, the, you are trapped into it, being the virtuous, righteous, sinless bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the abstract. <clears throat> God, looking down in the resurrection, sees us complete in him. The abstract. A clear title. The book of redemption. In the right hand of God. All right. Then every promise that's made is in your possession, and the Holy Spirit ha has to quicken that to you. Oh, my. What kind of a people should we be? How wonderful to see God's great spirit here to do that power. <clears throat> in other words, to work it out in our lives. Now, this is not the baptism. This is the spirit of God himself, even God himself. All right, now, <clears throat> the prophet here is speaking of a perfect faith preceding the word. In other words, before Brother Branham ever brought the word, he had that perfect faith by vindication, thus said the Lord. That's to the individual. To the individuals, the, the plurality. <clears throat> then there comes this message. Now, let's just take a look at the scripture, and it's 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter in verse 16, and we all know that because that's a rapture. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, <clears throat> and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, those are the events of the rapture. <clears throat> and he's telling you absolutely, and people will not believe this, but based upon thus saith the Lord, this is the appearing. This is when God himself literally comes down <clears throat> with a command, <clears throat> which is a marching order, as you will find in 1 Corinthians, the church subject is the church in order, meaning as to its ranks. You cannot have a resurrection without rank. Number seven comes up first, six, five, four, three, two, one, and you cannot have a rapture without ranks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven going up. <clears throat> so the Lord descends with a shout with a command. He comes in order to put the church in order. <clears throat> and the church in order 
cannot be in order, for they without us cannot be made perfect, and that which perfect has come, all in parts are done away, and the true revealed word for the last time stands before us as concerning the bride. Not the world out there. That's where this Awal Frank and his whoredoms got all mixed up. He wanted everything, he had, everything has to be explained. It doesn't have to be explained. What belongs to Jews, I'm not interested in. What belongs to King Tut, I'm not interested. Is there anything for Lee Vale? Now, if you want to poke your nose around and think you're some big smart guy, you will end up a complete mess, which you already are. That same infidel said Brother Branham made 37 mistakes or something. All as I've said before, his parents made the worst mistake. <clears throat> Better he hung himself upon a tree. You think you can fool with God, brothers? Let's not kid ourselves. You're not going to fool with God and smart off. You just think you can do it. Stand up and say, judge a prophet. They don't even know what a prophet is. He just thinks he knows. <clears throat> you say, you're kind of a guy that doesn't have much pity. Hey, look, if there's a vindication here, and I proved to you there's a fire burning here, and you want to stick your hand in it, you go ahead. And don't say, brother, they feel sorry. Now, listen, if you are completely insane, I will feel sorry for you. But if you stand there, hmm, burn. Tell me why I'm supposed to be sorry. Give me one reason. Brother, you're not going to attack that kind of nonsense on me. <clears throat> you got a vindicated word, you're up against something. Why no people don't believe it's vindicated? Because they don't want to. That's their business. I believe it's vindicated, that's my business. How wonderful to see God's great Holy Spirit to do that power. In other words, to manifest himself absolutely through the prophet of the end time and people believing it. Now listen, watch. The Holy Ghost itself or himself is here to bear record of this hour. What hour? Resurrection hour. He's talking about Easter seal. He's talking about resurrection. So the Holy Spirit is here to bear witness of the resurrection. <clears throat> Then why was Jesus Christ himself there? He said, destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise her up. The calling of the bluff was what? Resurrection. God is calling Satan's bluff right today by resurrection. <clears throat> and the word of his resurrection came before his death and resurrection. And the word of our resurrection, establishing it to us, comes before our death. Yep. <clears throat> to all the creeds and dogmas and our literal physical resurrection as well as our spiritual. You hear what I said? <clears throat> it has to. Otherwise, it is not the true operation of God because there must be a thus saith the Lord, then a performance. Or it's not the word of God. See, Jesus' death and resurrection was 100% foreign to the people of his day who were called the people of God. So is the appearing. 100% foreign. The appearing to the world is the rapture, hogwash. It precedes the rapture. <clears throat> Who is it that's going to raise the dead? Who is it going to get it out of here? Who is it with that military command, that shout, that putting the church in order? There's only one can do it, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. So therefore God must come and do it himself. As the author and the finisher. Well, you can't get away from it. The whole thing's got to be word. <clears throat> and that not only predestinated, it's got to be vindicated word. The Holy Ghost himself, the token. The Lord Jesus Christ himself is here to bear record of this hour, Easter. Jesus said so. And he's the same yesterday to Dan forever. How dare any man wipe that out of there? And notice what he quotes. The work that I do shall you do also. <clears throat> John 14 and 12. <clears throat> That's the proof of the resurrection. 
In other words, God raised up amongst us according to the truth. All right. <clears throat> Let's go to 1 Corinthians. You know, I, I, the good parts of these messages, we should just dwell and dwell them. Maybe the other, a little later we can sort of hurry up. But we're going to take, we're going to just work on this right now. Now, the, the Holy Ghost is here to bear record this time. Remember, Brother Branham said Luther looked for the pillar of fire. Wesley looked for the pillar of fire. The Pentecostals thought they had it. <clears throat> what was he talking about? The appearing. Building up to it. That the same Holy Ghost that came at Pentecost, that brought the word to Paul after Pentecost, the same Holy Spirit would descend again during that time and conclude the word. So you couldn't add to it or take from it. <clears throat> Open up all the scripture that Daniel had closed. Revelation 22 and 10 opens. In other words, it sets God's time clock straight. You know the hour in which you live. <clears throat> all right. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Holy Spirit is looking to this resurrection. All right. We're going to start here in verse 12. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? He's dead. And if Christ be not risen but dead, then our preaching is vain and our faith is also vain. <clears throat> in other words, there's nothing to it. Yea, and not only is it vain, but now we're in big trouble because we, we, have, we have found fault witnesses of God. Because we've testified to God that God raised up Christ, whom God raised not up, if so be that the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not raised. And if Christ is not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. Everything depends on the resurrection. <clears throat> now, in, if in the, then they that are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. You know, they've fallen asleep in Christ. What does it mean? Believing in him. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Now, he says, we are liars if we say that God raised Jesus. Now, but now is Christ risen from the dead. In plain English, now God has raised Christ from the dead. And thereby Christ has become the first fruits <clears throat> of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all she made alive. But every man in his own order. <clears throat> now that's a military order of ranks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Coming from the grave, six, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. In the rapture, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But every man in his own order. This is military. Christ the first fruits. Afterward, <clears throat> they that are Christ at his not coming, it should be appearing. Because the word is perusia. Not signifying the actual event of the person coming down the road, <clears throat> but the fact that the person is there. <clears throat> That's a secret appearing. That they've all got messed up in their thinking. They think it's a rapture. It isn't. It's the days of the Son of Man amongst us proving his resurrection. Because the proof of his resurrection was is in Hebrews 13 and 8, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He did after he rose what he did before he died. And the same thing happens in the book of Matthew, chapter 12, to the Gentiles. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> All right. Now then. Uh, we read far enough. Yes, we read far enough at that point. Okay, now let's go to 1 Thessalonians. <clears throat> now remember, he's talking about the fact of the resurrection and the time of the rapture. They come up in ranks, and they'll go in ranks. It's a marching army, a terrible army leaping over a wall. The Bible says his bride is as clear as the sun and as terrible as an army with banners. <clears throat> Everyone in divine order. And Brother Branham had to put the church in divine order, not only here, but for the resurrection because he is a world figure concerning the bride. Ever came just to America? No, they're going to rise in the, in the, where the sun's shining, where the sun isn't shining. One, one sleeping in the bed, one, one hauling in the grain. 
<clears throat> different sides of the earth. Now listen to 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you soar not as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring forth with him. <clears throat> hey, resurrection. Now, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord, wherefore comfort one another with these words. <clears throat> now, you look at this, this scripture is identical to the other scripture. But it gives us something <clears throat> that was not given in the other. Now, the other tells you, if you want to go back and look at it, <clears throat> Romans, 1 Corinthians 15, <clears throat> talking about this great event, after verse 23 comes forth, it says, Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till all enemies are put under his feet. <clears throat> Now, he's telling you something there. It's an interpolation. The last enemy destroyed his death. So he's telling you from this point on, when you enter into the period of his presence, which you're looking at, the Prussia, <clears throat> which is his appearing, you are definitely committed to passing right through. Nothing's going to stop you. Nothing, no more history right through to New Jerusalem. Because it tells you he turns the kingdom back to the Father. <clears throat> now, this portion here in, in Thessalonians does not tell you that. But the great mystery is the Lord descending from heaven with the shout, the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ rising first. Now, the point is this. What in the world does that mean? <clears throat> Nobody knew any more than did they at the time of Jesus when they spoke concerning the Son. Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither let thy holy one to see corruption. They did not understand the scripture concerning him and his resurrection. They didn't understand, but Jesus told them what it was and positively vindicated what it was. Now, we have been told by vindication that the shout is a message. <clears throat> the archangel voice is raising them from the dead, and the trumpet is a summoning, and the rat taking up to the marriage supper. Now, the point is this. That was preceded by thus saith the Lord. Now, you and I are waiting, and our patience is tried to see if that's true. Now, you can go home and say, well, I don't think it's true. That's fine. I got nobody's got any hold on you. Do what you want to. <clears throat> I can say, well, hey, this is not being fulfilled. Brother Branham is asleep. He's been gone for 25 years. My God, what's going to happen? You can do what you want about it. You understand what I'm saying this morning? You are waiting in your time slot. Now, you can believe that this is the message, or you don't have to believe it. Now, let's say that this is the truth and you miss it. Then forget the archangel and the trumpet. Because you can't have one without the other. It's one, two, three, and God does everything in threes. <clears throat> message, resurrection, summoning, <clears throat> supper. Now, there you are. Now, and he bases this all upon the fact of John 14 and 12. Now, let's go to the book of Hebrews, the sixth chapter. <clears throat> now, in the sixth chapter, you remember there's a cutoff in the fifth chapter concerning Melchizedek. Call to God to be in a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. He said, I've got many things to tell you, but he said, you can't take it now. you get that at the end time, which Brother Branham brought us at the end time. Now, he said, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Now, stop right there and jump over to three. And this we will do if God permit. <clears throat> the word perfection means absolute conclusion, the polishing, the finishing. There's no more. If you take from it, you messed it. If you add to it, you messed it. 
What if someone putting weights on your tires and he gets a tire perfectly balanced and somebody comes along and says, you know, those balancers are pretty cute. I think I'll put a red one over here. Now, how does your car run as an extra balance? Boom, 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 boom. Say, so who did that? You have to really take his hair off his head. I don't blame you. What do you think God's going to do to somebody who asked his word? <clears throat> well, I said to the guy, I think there's too many balances on this. I'll take one off. The car goes boom, 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 boom. See what I mean? You don't add, you don't take. Perfect is perfect. When that thing comes up just seeming exactly right, there's no wobble, there's no whoop, whatever you want to call it, no shimmer, no this. Hey, that tire's perfect balance. And you know something? There's very few tires in the factory that are in perfect balance to put them on your car because after all, you've got the wheel to contend with. <clears throat> I've had it happen once or twice of all the how many tires and I don't know. That's the way a lot of Christians are. You, there are there's very few that are in perfect balance, but they can get in balance through grace. <clears throat> now listen, <clears throat> we're going to go to perfection. Now watch. Concerning that, time of perfection, for it is impossible for those who are once for all enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, having fallen away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified themselves, the Son of God afresh, and put them over shame. <clears throat> now what has this Paul been talking about? He's been talking about Moses and Jesus Christ, two priesthoods. Now at the time of Moses, there was a perfect word given to them <clears throat> having gotten them out of Egypt to put them into Palestine, the promised land. And at that time, Moses said, don't you dare add a word or don't you dare take a word. <clears throat> now what happened to those who dared to fool with the word, they were destroyed because the word given was vindicated. Now Paul is saying the same thing here. <clears throat> There was a once for all enlightenment at the time of Moses. Do not add and do not take. There was a time of enlightenment at the time of Paul. Do not add or do not take. And at the end time, when there shouldn't be, but there has to be because of people in their sin, right within the bride, the word has become distorted. And now at the opening of the seals, we once more have a perfect word that you cannot add to and you cannot take from. Why? Because we're going to the tree of life and immortality. Because that's what happened in Eden, one word off. <clears throat> so at the end time, we have a perfect revelation of the word of God. Now, notice, if you add or take from it, if you open your mind, <clears throat> contrary to the vindicated truth, which is what we're looking at, it says here there is no other repentance left to you. Now, for seven church ages till the end of the seventh, you could repent. You could change your mind. Why? Because there was no ultimate. <clears throat> the Pope said this. The Bishop said this. The Presbyterian said this. The Elder said this. The Pastor said this. Evangelist said this. This guy said. That guy said. This guy said. All from the Word of God. And you had eight million people all saying something different from the same verse of Scripture. That's not going to get you anywhere. That sounds like your income tax <laughs> and the IRS. Oh, yeah, they tell you flat, this decision, though I sign my name, is not binding. Right, they tell you that. You cannot, they warn you. In other words, there is no precedent any longer. Everybody has veered from the precedent, and pre means before. Everybody veered from the Word of God. There's nothing left anymore of the Word of God. So God has to send a man on the stage somewhere. <clears throat> He's got to send Elijah. That's exactly what the Bible teaches. And Elijah will restore that word to us. And that word being perfect, you do not dare take one word from it. Now listen, let's read the rest. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom is dressed to receive the blessing from God. But that which bears thorns and briars is rejected, nigh unto cursing, whose end to be burned. Now who are the, cur who are the ones that get cursed at that time? at the end time, because at this time of the presence of Almighty God, when perfection comes, there is the judge standing there, and on the right hand are the blessed, and on the left hand are the cursed. <clears throat> and those ones that are cursed, there are the thorns, and they are the briars. And what are they according to Matthew 7? They are the false prophets and their children. 
which according to Second Peter have been taught falsely. In other words, any church that is, disagrees with the vindicated message is not of God. And there can be some foolish virgin amongst them, but normally they are cursed. Now let's watch this. <clears throat> But, beloved, we're persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. Now, what is he talking about? He is talking about the thought that which is cursed, that which is blessed, and that which stands in between. So you've got your three kinds of believers. Your true believer, your make-believer, and your unbeliever. And in the, in the believers, you've got those that are absolutely one with the word, like he's saying here, <clears throat> And those that have a fruit and a work that they're judged by, that get them in, and the rest are burned. And that's the white throne. <clears throat> the bride stands there. She's not even judged by it because she's the fruit. She's the herb. She's the, that which God dressed of his, of his ground, the, the lump of cake. And what are these that are burned? The Canaanites, the serpent seed. And what are these that get in by judgment? Foolish virgin. Now you're at the end time. <clears throat> it's going on right now. For God is not unrighteous, he said, to forget your labor love, which you showed toward his name, in that you minister to the saints and do minister. And he shall say to those on the right hand, you were, you were good to my brethren, come on in. Follow it? Boy, come on. White throne, Matthew 25. Perfect as ABC, and people stumble. See, the whole word of God comes together when you believe the, what the prophet said. <clears throat> All right, now what you're looking at here is the time of the resurrection because without a resurrection, you cannot have the judgment. Oh. No, you can't have fire falling on the earth unless the first resurrection takes place. <clears throat> you can't have the general resurrection where everybody's there before the white throne, at the white throne, until it's all over. So, all right. You're looking at this picture then as we see the resurrection brought forth here. <clears throat> okay, let's go to Malachi, <clears throat> the fourth chapter. And in Malachi, it says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, all the do, that are proud and do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and to leave them neither root nor branch, but unto you at that time. That fear my name shall the son of righteousness rise with healing in his wings, and you'll go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. <clears throat> What's he telling you? You go into the millennium. Right and you're glorified. As Brother Brown has said, healing in his wings has to do with immortality. Because that's what we're looking at, not just a physical thing right there. <clears throat> now, with that. Remember, it says, Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, which is verse 1 that burns him up. And at that time, he shall turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers, because the first part was taken care of at the time of Christ, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. <clears throat> In other words, he said, Except I send Elijah, you would be burnt up with them. Now, people say, Just a minute. How in the world can God do that? He's not going to do it. But he would have been obligated, except he had a plan to get the people out of it. That's grace. So, well, bless God, I don't see that in the cross. Well, I do. Except for Christ dying, Elijah couldn't come. <clears throat> there wouldn't be any grace. Because at the end of the church ages, it says concerning the whole church, you're wretched, miserable, blind, and naked. And in spite of people saying they got the Holy Ghost, he said, I challenge you. He said, you come to me <clears throat> that you may have the eye sap. Let's go back here and read this. In the third chapter of the book of Revelation, and he's speaking. And he said, I counsel you to buy me gold tried in the fire. You, and you may be rich and white raiment. You may be clothed. And uh, your, your nakedness do not appear. Anoint thine eye with eye salve that you may see. Now, they say, you people think, well, hey, they've got what it takes. The Bible does not say they have the ISAF. It says you go to the market and get it. Now, listen, what happened at the time of the wise and foolish virgin? 
The wise virgin had oil in their lamps. They took the word that had the Holy Ghost life in it. The foolish virgin would not take the word, and they went out looking for the Holy Ghost, and they got back too late. <clears throat> in other words, the church thinks it's got what it needs, but it doesn't have it. Now, let's go back to John 11. Now remember, this is Easter seal. This is Easter. This is resurrection. We are dealing with the resurrection. We are dealing with the second half of the first resurrection. This is resurrection hour. So now let's go to John 11. <clears throat> now watch in John 11, <clears throat> 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Now watch. And I knew that thou hearest me always. No problem with me and you. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, his face bound to the napkin. And Jesus said, Loose him and let him go. Now, what am I driving at? I'm driving at the fact that Jesus was the prophet, <clears throat> a prophet like unto me. And he stood there, and Moses, you know, Moses had thus said the Lord. And he was so face to face with God, he knew there was no problem between he and him and God. And the very day that God said, Listen, Moses, talk to the rock, don't smite, he went just bang the rock. Why? He didn't have to worry about God as concerning himself. He was 100% clear with God, 100% faced with God. He knew God face to face. But he always had to speak for the sake of the people. So Jesus said, Lord, I know you always hear me. There's no trouble. But for the sake of the people, it was the prophet, thus saith the Lord, Lazarus will rise. And he came back in a resurrection because he was already decaying and his body going to fluids. His brother Brandon said his nose and face had all fallen in. What am I telling you? I'm telling you the same Jesus is here in the form of the Holy Spirit and the pillar of fire working through the prophet Elijah. Thus saith the Lord, this is Easter. And he said, I challenge the world of the armies of the world. If God told me to go and raise Abraham Lincoln from the dead or George Washington, I would go there tomorrow and I would raise him from the dead or they could shoot me down. So thus saith the Lord, this is Easter. This is resurrection. Now you've got to believe it and begin your mind working on it. You can't say somewhere down the road, this, that's going to happen. It has already happened. This is proven by Matthew 12, <clears throat> which we read. Now, when we see a group of people sitting together and those signs manifesting themselves, that's the assurance that the abstract is there to vindicate that that's the property of God. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. The sign of healing amongst the, the people that are unregenerate, that they have an anointing and do not have the word, as Brother Branham called the false ones, anointed at the end time with the true Holy Spirit, they will say, yes, bless God. God is in our midst. We are in God. We are God's property. And it isn't so because they have turned down vindication and they're riding on the tails of manifestation without revelation. <laughs> And you can't do it. Manifestation demands revelation. Exactly true. There was a manifestation back in the days of the burning bush. And Moses went over to take a look at it. There was manifestation at the time of John the Baptist baptizing. He said, I am not Jesus. There was manifestation at the time of Jesus. He said, I am the Messiah. <clears throat> but they turned it down cold. And what did they do? They crucified what do they do at the end time? Crucify themselves the Son of God afresh. And remember, the Son of God is according to Romans 1 and 8. He's raised from the dead and came back as the Holy Ghost. So Son of God is always Holy Ghost. And as Brother Branagh said, we had almost 2,000 years of Son of God. But at the end time, you have Son of Man, which is the same Son of God simply manifesting in a miracle ministry. <clears throat> See? 
Now, so here, Mark 16 is in full view before the people. And Mark 16, which has been disavowed by the critics, has been manifested to be proven true. So therefore, every church that takes away and takes away Mark 16 after vindication is absolutely doomed to have their names out of the book of life. Now, you can do what you want about it. And you say, Brother Dale, they're ignorant. Now, shut up with that kind of crud in my, in my face. The Bible said God winked at ignorance one time, but he doesn't wink anymore. This thing was not done in the corner. So don't try to tell me any of that kind of slop. <clears throat> All these ministries today that you hear about, positively, Oral Roberts is one of them. Tommy Hicks is dead now. He was another one. Gail Jackson, he was another one. He is dead. And we got Osborne over there in France. And all of these people, Sorella, every single one, bases his ministry upon the vindicated ministry of William Branham. You do what you want about it. The record's in every book. Now, come on, put her down. And you remember what you heard this morning in this pulpit this minute, which according to record right here by my watch is 20 minutes past 12. What is it, May the 19th? I don't even know what the date is, 19th of May. There isn't one church, the Pope and all included, that can get away from going back to William Branham, vindicated prophet of God. Do what you want about it. <clears throat> so what about the guys that believed it before? They were there, but this is vindicated. This lets you know who's doing it. When men before could say, oh, maybe the devil does heal. Maybe the devil does this or that. We have a vindicated prophet who says no dice. We see a group of people sitting together, these signs manifesting. That's the assurance that the abstract is there to vindicate <clears throat> that that's property of God. <clears throat> now let's take the other quote Brother Branham said. He said, when you see God descend from heaven, stand before groups of men and declare himself as ever he did, that's what he's talking about. See, that's the value of knowing what's in his sermons. And you don't just say, well, Brother Branham was thinking this thought over here, and this thought here disagrees with that thought he thought of there, hogwash. This thought is in perfect alignment when you see, group, when you see God descend from heaven and stand before groups of men and declare himself as ever he did. You can't have one with the other, the other brother, sister. Come on. I don't care who you are. This puts Mark 16 in its place. These signs follow them that believe. And remember, that always has been the record. And remember, everybody doesn't pray for the sick. And remember, Brother Branham's own church did not have too much of this. The gifts, as it were, on the shelf. Not put away, <clears throat> as it were. You don't put the emphasis on the gifts. You put the emphasis on the one who was here. So we are Easter also. There you are. We are Easter. We are in resurrection. We are resurrection. Amen. We are now in our Easter. <clears throat> in other words, the abstract. It's been cleared that they can come out of the ground and we can be changed. It's been cleared. What's been cleared? The grace of God. The promise of God. Now it's free to work. Tell me, you're not here because you want to be born. Neither are you here because you wanted to be reborn of yourself. Neither are you here because you heard some voice you wanted. You're here because of the predestinating power of Almighty God based upon foreknowledge and election. Now today, you, we are in our Easter, which is Revelation 10 and 7, when all the mysteries are made clear. <clears throat> oh my, we didn't get anywhere, did we? We have already raised, hallelujah, from the things of the world to the things of God's promise. Not we will, we are. It's the potential. It's God's promise that he would pour out his spirit in the last days and that they would do and what they would do. All right, here we see Brother Branham <clears throat> bringing forth the never-changing truth that's in the Bible, such as rebirth, signs, follow the word, and everything else. But William Branham is the only one who can absolutely present the dominant truth of the hour. No matter what he says down here about people casting out devils if he says it, and this and that and the other thing, I want you, if you've got your books, to turn to page 21, <clears throat> paragraph 108. 
They do all these things themselves, but the real quickening spirit that comes to a believer quickens him to God's Word. That's back to eagle food again, right back to where he lives. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What's the verse say before that? Satan can produce any, per, impersonate anything he wants. <clears throat> you can be false anointed. <clears throat> Remember, he is talking about this hour in which we live. And it's got to be the abstract, it's got to be the vindication. As Brother Branham spoke of the redemption, the book of redemption that came down. All right. Notice, paragraph 96. Notice they laid hands on the sick, everything that was in God's promise. I'll pour my spirit in the last days upon all flesh. Old men dream dreams, young men see visions. All these different promises that he made, everything is lying right there in God's promise. All right, that's the word. 97. Jesus redeemed it to us. He bought it back to us. If we are ordained to be on that ground, what ground? The Bible ground. Like eagle walking in chicken nests. If you are ordained on that ground, in other words, predestinated, the Holy Spirit is here to find you. And when he finds you, you'll recognize his call. <clears throat> you won't be saying, well, that's of the devil. That interpretation is wrong. You'd know the hour you're living. You'd know that these things you are supposed to have, quickly you're raptured up to meet him, and now you're sitting in heavenly places in Christ. Oh, what a promise, what a heavenly father who would give us those things. Now, of course, if you believe number 96 up here, <clears throat> you'll believe 97. In other words, if you're really convinced concerning the fact of, of Mark 16, you won't turn away the part of the Bible that's vindicated by a prophet of God for the end time. You see, you see where they cut their own throats? They say, well, I believe the Word of God, bless God. It's truly the Word of God. Then when the Word of God's vindicated, they don't believe it. See, listen, you talk about perversity. I, 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 all you got to look out in the world and you'll see it out there. <clears throat> the message of His presence they do not want. 98. The Spirit quickens their fellowship with God so that they will, so that they call the dead back to life in that day. Paul uh, no, they laid their hands, they, they laid their bodies upon the dead, and they came to light. Now, he's looking back to the Old Testament there. All right, listen closely. They did the same things that Jesus did because the same spirit was upon him was upon them. If one spirit makes a man act this way, it makes the other one act that way. Now, how can this come upon you when you say the spirit of, you have the spirit of God and deny the works of God? It cannot be done. Now, what's he saying here? He's saying, look talking about himself and the people. He said, if God made Elijah do something a certain way, Paul a certain way, then it'll be the same with me. What God makes a man in the congregation do, it's open for anybody. But remember, all people do not speak in tongues. All do not prophesy. All do not interpret. All do not, raise, uh, all do not heal the sick. All do not have miracles. No way, shape, and form. But you'll notice it rings true through the whole Bible. If he did it back there, watch what he does complimentary in the audience. Watch what he does through his prophets. Watch what he does through a five-fold ministry and so on. It never changes, but you get people changing everything. No wonder the whole world is gone. Can't happen. There's no change, brother, sister. Okay, 99 we start. <clears throat> that'll be next, that'll be Saturday night. Now see where we go. Well, the Lord bless you. I uh, trust you've got some good out of this. There's a, it's it's kind of heavy studying, but brother, sister, you notice what you've got to do, and I'm trying to do it for you to help you. You've got to take everything the prophet said with everything the prophet said and get into his mind of who he was and what he was doing because it never changes. I don't care what message he preaches. It never changes. No, it never changes. You understand what I'm saying? This is the secret of understanding and going with Brother Brandon to get where he was. Let's rise and be dismayed. <clears throat> kind Heavenly Father, again, we want to thank you for your goodness to us. We believe, Lord, you've been here today, illuminating our hearts and our minds to see these things that the prophet is saying. 
knowing we cannot take one and weigh it against another thing that he said as though there were a discrepancy or there was a difference of some description. No, Lord, we know the whole word, word runs in continuity and an end time prophet could not say one thing here and another thing there. There is no way we know that he could say, now little bride, you're the, you're the sinless virtuous bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. You were, didn't do it in the first place. You were tricked into it. He couldn't say that and then turn around and say, well, you better be careful, a bride. You just ain't going to make it. There's no way, there's no way, Lord, we know because your own word that he quoted so many times said, whom he did predestinate, or foreknow he did predestinate. Whom he, whom he, he, whom he called, he, he justified, and whom he justified, right to the end he glorified. What can we say to these things that are possible? No way. God's going to do it all, Lord. So we know that the prophet is true to the word, and we've just got to get in the same spirit and to learn the same language that he was in and just see that, and we'll, we'll just be one with him. Because you made us a promise at the end time, we'd be one with you. He said, in that day, you'll know that I'm in the Father, and you and me and I and you. And he said, that was for this hour. And so we appreciate that. We appreciate, Lord, that there is a bride out there. If we're not a bride, there's a bride out there somewhere. And maybe say with the prophet, by the grace of God won't stand in the way. But help each one of us, Lord, <clears throat> to be with each other in the way, to comfort, encourage, to bind up, to lift up, to heal, to help. Whatever it takes, Lord, knowing that, that we're not the master you are, and no one has a right to judge the, that servant of a master. But you alone were doing that. So, Father God, take away all, all judgmental spirit from amongst us and all doubts and fears and grievances and those things, Lord, that work disaster in the people. We don't want to be, Lord, like the, when the people were tempest-tossed and you were sleeping in the boat. They said, don't you care that we perish? What are you doing there sleeping, Lord? We know that the God of Israel neither slumbereth nor sleepeth. And we know, Lord, you're in our boat. It's, it's like Noah's boat, it's firmly ensconced in it, Lord. And waves can mount, waters can roll anything else, but the... Little old ark, Lord, Brother Brandon said, where it's properly balanced, this, this boat's going to crest every wave. It's not going to go down, it's going to go under. So, Father, we, we pray that with that sweet love of Jesus Christ come in our church more and more and more until we just look at each other and believe for each other, you're a part and I'm a part, and act that way, Lord, because that's what Spurgeon said concerning healing. It's my job to believe you for the impossible and leave the results up to you. And so, Lord, we can have faith for each other and love for each other and leave it all to you because that's where it is anyway. We never start it. We can't continue. <clears throat> we can't finish it because you're the one that does it all. Help us to understand that and to walk in that light. Bless each one, O oh God, the sick amongst the need healing. May they be healed, Lord. I just pray in the holy name of Jesus Christ at this time. The sweet, solemn spirit of Jesus Christ, the healing virtue of God, flow through every nerve and every body, eradicating every sign of sin and anxiety and those things that lie within us, Lord. Just walking in this simplicity and faith, the Lord Jesus Christ, in that moderation and temperance which, which lie with there, Lord, for our using thereof. May the God of grace receive all the glory this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray.